and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Jo and I am a crime fiction, thriller, suspense, Nordic noir reader from the UK and I am back with a review and it is a review of Kathy Reich's new book, Fire and Bones. This is book number 23 or 24, I think, in the Temperance Brennan series of books. Um, I have read everything I think that Kathy Reich has ever written including some of her actual academic papers because I used to work as a forensic archaeologist and when I was doing my masters some of her papers made their way into reference points within my paper and yeah I feel like I used to really like Temperance Brennan books and I've struggled with the last probably the last five so I did get this like literally the day it was released I had it delivered and I think I will always read them because you know <laughs> 23 books in I kind of feel like I'm committed at this point but at the risk of getting ahead of the review not a fan so, I guess I'll back it up a bit and tell you what is this book about so this is kind of your classic Temperance Brennan book in that she's making plans so in this case it's to go away for the weekend with Ryan and instead of going away she ends up going to DC to provide assistance on an arson investigation. It differs slightly in that once again this is another book that is not set in either Montreal or Charlotte. Um, if you're unfamiliar Temperance Brennan books generally the character splits her time between Montreal and Charlotte which is what Kathy writes as uh, work as a forensic anthropologist is what she did and then she wrote that into the character of Temperance Brennan. This book though, much like the one prior, which I cannot remember the name of off the top of my head, but she goes to the Caribbean and in this one she goes to DC. So it's different in that respect, but it is still a Brennan's planning to do something, something happens, she ends up assisting on a case gets herself in trouble, reaches a resolution. <laughs> that is the standard format that they take and this one is no different. So what did I think of this book? So as I've just said, not the biggest fan of this. I think one of my biggest problems with this book is it felt completely underdeveloped. If I was reading this and was told this is a first draft and it's going to be fleshed out and like it's just more of a notes if you like of how the chapters will loosely flow I would have been like oh wow this is going to be really good once it's polished and developed further but it wasn't polished and developed further um, I feel like Kathy Wright's got bored writing it I think the character of Temperance Brennan even seemed completely done with the anthropology side which made that character completely unlikable um, I just it's it's basically it's very boring to be perfectly honest I let's say I've worked in forensics I've worked as an archaeologist it's not too different to forensic anthropology um there are days when it is painstakingly slow where you only things that you achieve that day could be scraping your knuckles developing your calluses on your hands more and doing paperwork usually in the pouring rain like there are days like that and this book kind of reminded me of those days where it's a struggle to do the uh, like bare minimum but it was supposed to be like an enjoyable read and instead it was painstakingly slow extremely obvious like from the second one character appears, that character might as well have just been called the baddie because it was alarm bells going obvious that that's what they were. Like, I just, I, I don't know what the book was trying to achieve, to be perfectly honest. It's just bad. I think 23 books in, it's kind of at the point where I'm like, do you know what? Just retire Temperance Brennan because from 
reading this book, Kathy Ranks isn't enjoying writing about the character or writing situations for the character that are interesting anymore. So, you know, retire and go live on an island with Ryan. Done. I said that it was a very obvious read. Um, a caveat that with usually within Kathy Wright's books there's like mini mysteries within the larger mystery and one of the sort of side quest mysteries ends with we'll never know the answer like I'm sorry are you 10 years old writing a story that is and they all woke up because it was just a dream because that's that's what that's giving me I'm afraid and it would have been something that was easy to tie up and to tie into all of the rest of the main plot but instead it just sort of went oh yeah I've not finished that bit off have I like you could kind of almost feel like an editor had gone back and said you know you've never actually answered this one oh yeah yeah I've not had that um well I guess we'll never know like no do better <laughs> Usually Kathy Wright's books do wrap up quite quickly, like they, they sort of build to a big reveal and then it's fast paced through uh, the wrap up of what happens after the reveal. And this one is no different in one respect in that like it does move very quickly, but you weren't really given time to digest what was being revealed. It was like, here's reveal number one, here's reveal number two, here's reveal number three. And it was chapter after chapter after chapter with no real connection between them. It was just a, right, I, I only want to write three more chapters, so I'm just going to do one, two, three, done. It didn't seem to make any sense. The main characters that are kind of, I guess, supporting cast, but the part of the bones, Temperance Brennan universe of like Ryan, uh, Sidel, Sliddle. I'm not even entirely sure how to say his name. I always call him Sidel, but I don't think that that's actually what it is in the book. I think it might be Sliddell. Anyway, him. Um, like Temperance's family, like her sister and her daughter Katie, they don't really make an appearance in this. And I think that is part of the problem with the book. Like, Temperance Brennan needs the supporting cast around her to really work as a character. Otherwise, she's just an annoying lone wolf that you're like, that is not what any sensible person would do. And it's not like you've got a established trust with the people around you that they would allow that. This is a random stranger that you have met two chapters ago and were supposed to believe that they would just break every known protocol just because, oh, well, it's you. Like, no, that didn't feel right. And because there wasn't that supporting cast to make Temperance look more believable, the character just came across as arrogant and annoying. And it kind of got to the end where I was like, well, you know, if she doesn't get out of this, oh well. So clearly this has very much become a book rant, but there are two things that I wrote down whilst I was reading this that were particularly annoying to me. So the first one is one of the alibis for a character is that they were watching a box set of bones. Now, I know that the TV show Bones is based on the books that Kathy Wright wrote, but they obviously switched details. So in the Bones the TV show, the character of Temperance Brennan is an author who writes about a character called Kathy Wright, whereas Kathy Wright writes about Temperance Brennan and things. And the Temperance Brennans are very different in them. Um, like. Really, other than using the name and the general premise, there isn't like a whole lot of crossover. I've always maintained that when Bones the TV show started, Kathy Wright's writing went downhill because everything seemed to be more writing for the TV show, knowing what the TV show would like, what things they would use. Um, everything just, for me personally, as I say, went downhill. But Bones the TV show ended 
like at least 12 years ago. There is nobody, really, other than a die-hard fan who is watching reruns on a box set. Had they said they were watching a random TV channel that just shows repeats of old shows, then fine, I would have let it slide. I'd have been like, oh, we get it. It's Bones, the TV show. Yes, you know, you don't have to mention it in every book. However, the fact that it specifically said a box set, I was like, there is nobody in this day and age who is watching box sets like that of shows that ended over 12 years ago. That's not believable. Just say that they're watching reruns. Like, there's, there's got to be TV channels in America that are showing them. If I can switch on the TV in the UK and watch reruns of CIS, NCIS, Bones, and God knows however many other shows of a similar nature just by flicking through a TV channel, I am sure there is one in America that does exactly the same. Just say that they're watching that. At least make it relevant to modern times rather than just box set like it just it wasn't in keeping with the character either of that wasn't a character that is going to sit at home and watch box sets now it could have been just a you know a throwaway comment that somebody is using as a oh this is my how we know their alibi is rubbish because it's not actually in keeping with the character but yeah <laughs> I will die on a hill that says nobody is watching repeats box like religiously watching box sets of TV shows that old um, unless they're a diehard fan which that is it's never mentioned again it if it was a precursor to the character being obsessed and like inserting themselves into an investigation because they wanted to be like in the TV show Bones or something fine but yeah <laughs> this could just be a rant about that one sentence but there was another thing that annoyed me and that is every okay maybe not every but 90% of chapters ended with a foreshadowing that could have been written by a 10 year old it was all things like sorry I'm looking down because I wrote if only I'd realized what was coming up or but that's not actually what happened type of sentences. Camera angle might look slightly different because the battery's just died, but yeah. I say that it's like an eight-year-old uh, writing because when I was 11 and I started high school, the first thing we had to do in English was write a story. And our English teacher very specifically said, I don't want a story that ends with, and it was all a dream or, that kind of like fake suspense because it's not actually suspenseful it's not adding anything to the story it's just you don't know how to end it so you just end it with a it was all just a dream and that's the kind of vibe that I got from basically the end of every chapter every chapter was a I don't know how to end this oh if only I knew what was going to happen next to try and get you to carry on reading rather than actually building a suspenseful story that had a flow to it instead it was very right there's one chapter there's another chapter if i didn't know better i'd say that kathy Wrights was being paid per chapter and so what could have been a short story was built into a longer form story with absolutely no additional content just pointless Ooh, i don't have a way to end it I know I'll just be, oh, if only I'd have thought about this sooner kind of thing. Like, I bet if I open a random chapter, there you go. So, page 90, the end of chapter 11. Instead, by day's end, I'd get a far less pleasant surprise. Let's see if there's another example. The end of chapter 10. I'd just crawled under the covers when the dreaded, though not unexpected, phone call came. Like, just building some proper suspense. It doesn't need to be. Oh, you'll never guess what happened next, as every single chapter end. It's just not enjoyable. And it created a very, like, 
I, just, I can't even think how I want to describe it. Just like, it, there was no flow to it. Much like my ranting. <laughs> it's just, it didn't flow nicely. It was very stagnated and very just not going anywhere. And like, I just, there was no suspense whatsoever. No jeopardy, no mystery. Just, just a whole lot of nothing. And I think after 23 books, the character deserves better and the readers deserve better. And if it wasn't for the fact that I'm so invested having now read 23 flipping books of Kathy Reich's Temperance Brennan, I probably wouldn't buy any more. But I'm at this point where I'm like, but what if the next one is a return to form? And so I keep buying them. And I know I shouldn't because at this point, just printing money from not having to actually create an engaging tale and yeah I'm angry and disappointed and yeah I think that is <laughs> as good as I can say about the book because as I say we are fully in book rant territory but yeah so what should I give it out of five you may be surprised to hear I gave it a two out of five and that is purely because one out of five is always reserved for did not finishes in my ranking. I'll be honest I may need to readjust this whole ranking system so that a did not finish is a, a zero but then I feel like I am always able to judge what I've read so what I've read wasn't interesting therefore it's a one out of five but I did finish it I can't say I enjoyed it. It wasn't a hard read. It wasn't a chore to read, but it just gave me nothing. And yeah, that is all that I can really say about it. So clearly I would not recommend this book to anyone, but especially not to people who have read the Temperance Brennan books and are invested in the character because I think you will be disappointed. But as always let me know down in the comments if you think I am completely wrong because that's the best thing about books is everyone has a different opinion on them and I would really love to hear from somebody who enjoyed this to see what I might be missing but yeah. Uh, thanks for watching. If you've liked this video give it a thumbs up and hit subscribe if you want to see more book reviews or book rants and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Bye!